was a really bad decision because now I didn't have a band, I didn't have a car, and all I had was a bass and a bass amp and I was walking down the street and then it popped into my head. I thought, there has to be three other guys in Los Angeles, California that, like me, wants to fucking grab the music industry by its wimpy fucking balls and rip those motherfuckers off. I knew they were out there, but I had no idea where. And on a Thursday night, I decided, again, for no apparent reason, to go to Hollywood, California, and go to a club called the Starwood. I had no idea who was playing that night. I didn't know what I was gonna do there. But when I walked through the fucking door, you know what I saw? I saw a motherfucking drummer. He was 17 years old. He was on top of that stage, and he was smashing those fucking drums. You know who that was? That was Mr. Tommy fucking Lee, right there. So glad that I went to that club on that Thursday night. So I sit down with Tommy, and I'll never forget this. I can fucking picture the moment, man, just like it was yesterday. And I ordered a rum and coke. He had two beers, and this is what we talked about. We talked about how much we fucking loved heavy metal. That's what we talked about. And we also talked about how much we fucking love punk rock and we talked about how much we love the bands that came before us we love fucking T-Rex and we love The Sweet and we love Black Sabbath and we love Queen and we said to each other like two brothers let's start a fucking band and that was the beginning and we set up at this girl's house bass and drums and we were playing these songs just bass and drums. Too fast for love. I'm at the show. Starwise. Take me to the top. Public enemy number one. I think you get the idea. It was the beginning of our first fucking record, but we had a small fucking problem. Actually, we had two fucking problems. We didn't have a guitar player. We didn't have any fucking beer. So we decided to go to a 7-Eleven. And we saw a magazine called The Recycler Magazine. Tommy picked up the beer, I picked up the magazine, and you know what it said? It said, loud, aggressive, rude, guitar player, available for a fucking band. Only Tommy if you're serious, and you know who that was? That was my fucking boss. Set the fuck down, story time's not over. Right up here, so. It's like you're a Bon Jovi concert, just set the fuck down. So we were playing these songs, and we fucking meant it, man. We were fucking pissed off, and we were young, and we were fucking serious, but we didn't have a lead singer. And Tommy said, I know a guy, except for he's in another band, and Mick said, let's go fucking check him out, and if he's good, let's fucking steal his ass. So on a Tuesday night, we went back to the fucking Starwood, out walks this goddamn lead singer with bleach white hair, white leather pants, and a white fucking jacket, he was singing some fucking cheap trick, he was a motherfucker, you know who that was? Right there. Alright, so I think you get the point. We wanted to do what we're doing right now. And the reason that we're here, that we didn't want to look like anybody else, that we didn't want to sound like anybody else, we didn't want to act like anybody else, and we wanted to be your fucking band. That's what we wanted to do. So we had $26, 
That's all we fucking had. We went to a rehearsal space in Burbank, California, and we set up for one fucking day. We had one fucking chance. We had one fucking song. And we sat there, we looked at each other, and we said, you want to make history, motherfuckers? And Mick picked up the guitar and broke into the fucking riff of Wildwire. Tommy starts smashing on those drums. I picked up the bass, then scrapped the microphone, and at that exact moment, January 17th, 1981, Motley Crue was fucking born. That's why you're here. That's why we're here. This is not goodbye. This is not farewell. I promise you, our music is gonna haunt you till the fucking day that you die. Are you ready? Let's make some fucking noise.